hit. Savage Axe is 450 yards. Tough shot. Well, from a customer's perspective and end user perspective, I guess I'll go along with half of what they're saying here. I'm in the 2012 Savage catalog where their mission statement is boldly printed on the inside cover stating the following. Accuracy is the journey and the destination. I like that last part, the destination. I agree. As your customer, I want to buy a Savage rifle, take it out of box, use some good ammunition, careful shooting, and achieve one MOA or better. That's my destination, my interpretation right. of destination. And I want to add reliability too. I don't want to have any problems, any parts, breakages. It's just got to work, and I'm shooting one MOA. And I don't want a picky gun. I don't want to have to do this. Take a journey as a customer of Savage, or any other manufacturer for that matter. That's the part I disagree with from that perspective and end user perspective. I don't wanna have to work up hand loads, go and buy lots and lots of expensive ammunition to find out what shoots well in the gun. I don't want a journey. I just wanna arrive at the destination, my money being well spent. Well, the question is this, does the Savage Axis live up to the Savage reputation for accuracy and frankly, that mission statement? I'm gonna answer that question and you have clicked on and unfortunately found the Nut and Fancy Tabletop Review on the Savage Axis, welcome. Hovering above it, by the way, is a gun currently in the Nut and Fancy Project inventory, the Ruger American, just reviewed. And a lot of TMPers are wanting me to review as quick as I can the Axis. Here it is, dudes. Coming at you. There's a lot of other, not a lot, but there are a few other great budget rifles out there. If you want to call it that. Low cost shooters like the Marlin X guns, the X7 currently. They change the nomenclature here and there. Mossberg ATR. Remington 770, the discontinued Stevens 200. Remington 700 ADL. More expensive than these guns. These aren't the only games in town. And I have an inkling that Marlin would shoot very well, knowing Marlin rifles. But we're gonna concentrate on the Axis right here in this tabletop review. First though, I gotta go back to the catalog to show you the excellent variety that Savage has on the Axis. It actually meets or exceeds their competitors. This is the Axis page in the catalog, well laid out. I love that model right there. Go figure, Axis SR. It's in short calibers only, comes with a scope, threaded muzzle if you want to suppress it or put a flash hider on it. I like options. Two versions of stainless steel Axis models there. One has a scope, one doesn't. Camoed model. That's cool for you hunters. And then the one you're looking at on the table right there is the Savage XP. This one right here. The 3x9 scope, which I'm going to tell you right now is pretty much Walmart quality. Same with the rings. It will totally do the job. It will. But I don't like them. Very cheap. Uh, yeah. I mean, the scopes nowadays are so much better than they used to be. It will work. But if you're going to long range it, I don't know if I'd want it. You have a left-handed version too. Lefties rejoice. American doesn't. Ruger American. And then also a youth model. Well done, Savage. That'll take us to a very, very brief discussion on philosophy of use. If you're new to the Nut and Fancy Project, I believe you should put some thought in how you're gonna apply your system. And when you're talking about a gun like this, how do you intend to use it? What do you expect it to do for you? Is it gonna be worth the money? I use philosophy because that entails thought. And I'm just gonna say the following on the Savage Axis. It is first and foremost a low cost 
economical hunting rifle. Next, a survival rifle option. And then an Alaskan rifle. Maybe recreational. If you want, want more details, go to the Ruger American Review and I have a discussion there. Watch the first few minutes and that will answer all your questions. And that's it. We are complete with philosophy of use. Hope you liked it. Innovation, design, materials, quality, blah, 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 all that stuff. I'm going to go fast on the Savage Axis. First, these two guns look very similar, don't they? Said that in the Ruger American Review. They're so similar, in fact, if it weren't for the scope differences and the fact that I left the stickers on the Ruger American, I, I couldn't tell them apart at first glance or from a distance. The triggers are different, yes. They're very similar. Rumor has it that the same dude that reviewed the design this, design that. I don't know if it's true or not. It's mostly a good thing, but both of these rifles are pretty squared away in their feature sets, starting with a stock, for instance. Nice recoil pad. Soaks it up, and I found it to be pretty soft shooting. No problems at all. We electrical tape ours here in TMP so it doesn't grab clothing. We shot this extensively in the desert and also the range. The Savage Axis. Same for the American. You've seen that footage already, right? No raised cheek piece, just like the American. It's just straight. So get your scope height right. Oh, wait, it comes with a scope, so you just have to deal with it. Hope it works for you. And then we come to an attempt to provide you with some traction, both on the pistol grip and on the end with some molded in something, something. And it pretty much sucks, just like the American. To me, I find it provides no traction. It's a very slick stock. If you want to give it traction, how about a little thing called checkering? Reference to FN SLP shotgun if you want to see how molded in checkering should be executed. Just outstanding. But if I were to keep the rifle as a customer, I would totally wrap it with something. Give it some more traction, if that was important to me. Trigger guard. A little bit bigger than that of the Ruger American. Accommodating gloved hands a little bit better. You can see the Ruger American back there. I forgot to mention that. Integral. It's plastic. I don't care. I don't need a steel trigger guard. I don't need a pop metal trigger guard. Plastic's fine. It'll wear just fine. How about that trigger? Well, as you can see, it's not the Savage Accu Trigger. And that's mostly a bad thing because the Accu Trigger is pretty much awesome. Except for a little thing I called SFL, and that is my own acronym. That stands for Side Force Lockout. Talking Accu Trigger. So you cock the gun, push the side of the trigger, and it just disengages. You have to recock the bolt to make it go. You don't have that problem with the Savage Axis, but you also don't have real precision and adjustability with that trigger as well. This one, out of box, pulls just over five pounds. I think the early Edge rifles and Axis rifles, Edge was this predecessor, they changed the name because there were some trademark issues. They pulled around seven. This one pulls a lot better. They have improved it. Savage and there's a really easy the way as an end user to improve it more. It's Here a comes a picture. Rifle. When you take the trigger out of the stock, you'll see a spring at the rear there. You can do a couple things if you're willing to do a little bit of minor gunsmithing. You can cut off a coil, reducing it by, I don't know, two pounds or so. Just one coil. Don't cut too much. Or you could just get a smaller spring and experiment and then in the front portion, you could actually do some polishing on the engagement surfaces. I would just use uh, maybe a Dremel with a little cotton buffing wheel, maybe some flits. And you can probably come out with a trigger around three pounds. No sweat. And void your warranty. <laughs> so if you find it, I did not do that with this gun. I tested it as it came from the box. It's breaking at five pounds. All the shots with the Axis. Five pounds. Thank you very much. Um, it's not a great trigger. There is a little bit of take up. It breaks okay. I wasn't digging it when compared to the Ruger American. The Ruger American has a much better trigger. It is adjustable. We spun that sucker down to an easy three pounds. It's got the trigger blade in it, so it makes it kind of like the Accu trigger. Kind of. I prefer the Rugers on, on this one. Uh, the X7 by Marlin also has a very sweet trigger on it, adjustable. So the Axis is kind of not keeping up with the competition, if you were to ask me. Okay, just keeping it real. There you go. There's the bolt. It has a higher throw than the Ruger American. I hate to keep making comparisons against Ruger American, but it is here. It's interesting. It's a good comparison and contrast. This throws higher, and like I told you 
in the Ruger American review. The shooting I, uh, or the, the optic I did the shooting with was this uh, Nikon Buckmaster scope. It's a great scope, high value scope. Four and a half to 14 power, and it has some turrets that we used for long range shooting. Knocking the steel out to 450. We could have gone longer, Good. but with the wind, eh, I just decided to do it that way. Great scope, but one thing we had is the bolt handle rubbing and scoring the bell. Savage axis. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's so funny. I mean, I like keeping my scopes very low to the bore axis. I mounted this one. I did not know that sa Savage Axis bolt would throw so high. And I, no, I didn't test it because I was doing a lot of gun work the night before getting ready for the shoot. We hike into the mountains and lo and behold, it rubs. My son Tactical Doodle's like, oh crap, what are we going to do? I'm like, we're shooting it. Lube it up. We threw some slip 2000 on it and off we shot. Didn't affect anything except the bolt smoothness. The accuracy wasn't affected at all. My point, I guess, is that it does throw a little bit higher than the Ruger Americans. This has a 70 degree bolt throw and, it, in my opinion, has a better bolt on it. It's longer, more slender, easier to get, lots of clearance on the scope. It's an improvement. That's all I'm saying. Here's field strip and maintenance while we're here. There's your bolt release lever. I gotta pull the trigger and I gotta manipulate it like that. There you go. We'll take the bolt out, take a look at it. Two big old lugs right there. Minus eight degrees. Engaging into the recesses of the barrel, providing a tight lockup. There's your spring ejector and your extractor right there. I actually found the extraction ejection sequence to be rather weak on the axis. Several times the round would pop up and land right on top of the magazine. Several times. That to me is just not right. It shouldn't happen. Didn't have that problem at all with the Ruger American. It was very positive. I could actually go really fast with a bolt, which I prefer to do as a bolt shooter. Or slow. I could vary the ejection pattern to, to a certain degree on it. You can with this too, but there just were a couple sequences where it seemed kind of anemic. Ran out of space already. Polished bolt body. Seriously? That is a mim mimmed bolt. It's not really extended, smooth handle on it. And then you have the protruding firing pin right here so you can tell when it's cocked, which is cool. You can also tell it with this, the takedown. That will raise and protrude when the gun is cocked. There's your field strip and maintenance. Hope you liked it. And then it's also an enclosed receiver. A good thing versus at least the American. I don't know about other guns because I don't have them on the table. Put this in real quick. Is it's an enclosed receiver with a larger opening than the Ruger American. See that? I don't know if I'd be single loading, but if I ever had a jam of some sort, I'd want the larger opening. It is a stiff receiver because you have a top strap of metal coming here, so two point bases or two piece bases will work out just fine. Incidentally, speaking of the long range stuff, I wanted to be able to range out to seven yards with a desert shooting on the axis. And I quickly ran out of elevation with this scope. Two ways to handle it. There are actually some night force bases for Savage that you can use. They have 20 MOA built into it. They're steel and they're around 90 bucks. Didn't see any others as I researched around. So you could buy do it that way. I just did it the home mechanics way, dudes. I just took a piece of sheet metal right there. You see it sitting under the base and I dremeled it and ground it and sanded it and put it under the rear base forming my own incline. Awesome. Worked out great, man. Yeah, for a temporary fix, perfect. You can buy scope shims for that that'll do the same. And kind of getting back to philosophy of use, you hunters kind of need to know how far you're going to shoot out. If you're just doing a 350 max range shot, which I totally recommend, maybe even closer, 200 max range for maximum knockdown on that animal, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you're going to range out to 500 plus, you're definitely going to have to do some MOA adjustments on the base because these bases right here, they're number 46 Savage bases, they are flat. There you go. Look how smooth that bolt is. Oh, that is a nice bolt. Uh, granted, with that low hanging bell of that scope, we didn't know it so much. <laughs> but it is good. It really couldn't be improved. And that will take us to the magazine. I don't like this feature. Said it before. I'm worried that over time it will lose tension. Not so much break, and then I'll lose a magazine. It is a metal four-round magazine. There, we covered firepower. 
it was reliable, no problems. You can top feed it, but it is difficult because you're going through that loading port and you're having to align that cartridge up on a, one set of feed lips. It's not like loading into a Remington 700 where you just have a staggered floor plate and you can just jam the rounds down. It's tougher. The Sa Savage 10 FP is the same way. And you can top load that. You have to because it has a blind magazine. But I usually just broke the magazine out and loaded it that way. Notice the difference in profile. It's kind of rounded on the American. On this, uh, it is rounded, but maybe not so much. There's your two action screws right there on the bottom. Huh. Looks like Ruger American copied those pretty much identically. Yeah, they're two big Allen head screws, and, and this is a bedded stock of, of sorts. I got to tell you, I like the, the Ruger American job better. Here in the American, we have two V, stainless steel Vs, which made into machined recesses in the bottom of the receiver. The way they do it here is they have steel shrouds on the screw, and the the receiver will pull against those shrouds and free float the barrel. That's all good. I like that part. Um, I do prefer the American though. I do. It seems like it's a better system. There are actually four big contacts of steel in the American. Here I'm just relying on those steel sleeves to do it. Right about here is the recoil lug and it's not part of the action, it's part of the stock and it will mate into a portion of the receiver of the axis. Seems like it does its job. It's a little bit unconventional. They're, they're doing it that way for cost. This is definitely a price point rifle and there's gonna to have to be a way they come to that price point. And that's one of them. Another one is the Savage Collar, which is pretty much famous and I don't have any issues with that at all. It'll headspace the rifle and actually lock the barrel into the action, providing what we're gonna see is decent accuracy. And that'll take us to the 22 inch barrel sporter contour. It is designed for a couple shots and then let it cool. That's a hunting rifle, right? Then it has the recessed crown on it. I'm trying to look because some, I think it doesn't. I was thinking of the Ruger American. Yeah, it doesn't. It's just a standard crown on that. Lightweight profile barrel. Not bad. Sling studs if you need it. Also for your bipod. Keep in mind it is a plastic stock. There is no aluminum in this portion. As you heat the rifle up, and we did heat the rifle up, you could actually get some flexing and some variances in that plastic stock. Just be careful. That's it. Ergonomically, it's a nice rifle. It's smooth operating. It's fast shooting, just like the American. I don't see any huge show-stopping issues with it, and that's going to take us to attacking that mission statement as we look at accuracy. I guess I'll do reliability and durability first, and then firepower. I already said four rounds. You know, they're going to make extended magazines. I don't know. I don't think most hunters care. Just for fun, me being a gun tester, ah, I wouldn't mind it. It'd be cool for running a gun, but four rounds. It's offered in several calibers. You can go to the catalog, their website, and you'll see what it's there. Uh, durability and reliability. Uh, like I said, I'm worried about the tab on the magazine. The stock, you can beat the crap out. Don't have to worry about it. I'm not really worried at all about the action. I think it'll be super sweet. Long wearing. I could be wrong. There you go. Finally to accuracy. Here's what happened. Is the Savage Axis a one MOA shooter? Verdict says... Nope. Now hold on, if you're a Savage fan, uh, I'm shooting all kinds of loads, not just the premium loads. You'll see those too. But here's PMC 147 grain FMJ. I like shooting that because in the survival POU, like I've said before, that's a realistic load. It's one you'll probably have. Maybe Wolf 147 grain. It shot those like crap. The American shot those better. PMC's right there, another group. I gave it another shot. Ah, it didn't work. This is a great load. It's Federal 150 grain soft point and it did not shoot too impressively on that outing. Not so much. So let's feed it something better. How about some Honey Shack 168 grain AMAC 762 by 51. Now that's a better group. I like that. And I feel good about the trigger presses. Now this is in the desert and wind really wasn't kicking up. I'm shooting off a polymer table. I sometimes say I'll add in a quarter Maybe even a half MOA because of that table, but I feel good about the shots. So there you go. 
Let's see, I've got, I'm gonna show you another Desert Target. Here's Desert again. Here's XM80, it's a federal round. It's right here. Got all kinds of boxes of ammo, this stuff right here. It's good FMJ stuff, 15 bucks a box where I bought that from. Shot pretty good, I was happy with that group. I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm not. That's ball ammo. XM762 would shoot even better than that. I've shot three quarter inch groups with that, that stuff. XM80, not so much. Another PMC group, seeing if I could bring it together. Now I gotta tell you something. One, I did not break the barrel in, just like the Ruger American. I mean, I just shot it, and I shot it hot. I did not let it cool down. I'm shooting it, shooting it, shooting it. Does that account for some of the action? It might. To me, it's a better test, though, because I've said before, a lightweight sporter barrel cannot be a sustained shooter. Just, I should say sustained fire shooter. Maybe that's what you're seeing here. Then I'm like, okay, we got to give it another shot. Let's take it to a range, put it on concrete, feed it some really good stuff. Here's Fusion, 150 grain soft point out of the Savage Axis. That's this ammo coming at you right there. No, 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 no. It shot like crap out of the Ruger American as well. Gotta say, it did. That's a great ammo. Hornady Custom, 150 grain, boat tail soft point. I'll tell you what, if your gun doesn't shoot that into an MOA, then it uh, it is not a one MOA shooter. And that's pretty much the bottom line on the axis. It should have shot that into an inch, sub inch. And those were good trigger presses. I don't think wind was a, was a player. The barrel was not that hot. Still a good group, it really is. But as we see from some of these lightweight polymer plastic stock rifles, you'll have two close, one flyer. Two close, one flyer. Some guys are saying this Savage Axis is a one MOA shooter, one inch gun for them. Sub inch group for our sub inch gun form at 100 yards. I just did not see it in extended testing. 180 grain PowerPoint. Oh man, that shot way bad. Now there's one round here, another here, another here off paper. Remington Corlock. Very representative hunting load. This one right here. 150 grain pointed soft point. Shooting okay. You know, that's definitely good hunting accuracy. Totally is. I think some guys expect it to shoot like a bench rest rifle. This did not shoot like a bench rest rifle. No way. The best group I got is probably right there. If we were to remember how the Ruger American shot, it's basically the same. These two guns shoot very similar to me. You know, there's a Hornady Custom. Almost an identical group. You have two close rounds, one throwing. To me, that's the gun, not the shooter. I'm going to call it a one and a half MOA gun, just like I did the Ruger American. You might get lucky and take that journey that Savage Arms was talking about in their mission statement and make it into a one MOA sh shooter. Take that journey. Go ahead. Enjoy. Spend lots of range time. And I'm not going to say guys aren't getting one MOA. This is one sample. But I just did not see it. I will say, for what it is, though, a $300 gun, the accuracy is excellent. Totally in the ballpark. It just isn't one MOA. Leave it at that. Accessories. Well, we talked about the trigger modification. I would probably mod the trigger if it was my rifle. And I would also, I forgot to mention this, I think, is chamfer these sharp edges right here. They were obnoxious when shooting without gloves. It's not a very comfortable trigger face, I don't think. Maybe put on some grip tape on the stock. Pitch the scope, or better yet, get the version without the scope. Put your own glass on there that you will like better. Call it good. Sling, standard, bipod, standard. Buy extra, a couple extra mags. I do love the detachable magazine option in a bolt gun. I just want it to be reliable and durable. Value is excellent. On par with the Ruger American who's been sitting quietly on the top there. Definitely on par. Um, I think you're getting a heck of a lot of gun with the Savage Axis. Between these two rifles, the Marlin not playing, the ATR not playing, I would choose a Ruger American rifle. I would. Has a quicker bolt. It, I shouldn't say quicker, but shorter throw bolt, a little bit longer bolt handle, better trigger. I like the bedding system a little bit better. Yeah. It's got a tang mounted safety on it, the axis, I forgot to mention that. It's very positive and ergonomic, I love that. No problems at all on that. Excellent.
against the, uh, the Marlin X7. I don't know. I think, like I said in the Ruger American review, they're all good. They're all good. All of these rifles are. Not bench rest rifles, though. Check out the ATR. Check out the X7. You can't go wrong. I think track record on the Savage Axis, and it has been out a while, starting with the Edge again, on into 2012. I think the track record's been great. Talking to the dealers, I don't hear many problems with them. No factory returns, no complaints, and that's a great way to tell if a gun is having problem, you, problems. You talk to the gun dealers locally and say, hey, have you had any Savage Axes come back? Nope. <laughs> you know, if you don't hear from them, there's no complaints. No. So, bottom line, it does not, in my book, meet up to normal savage accuracy standards from what I've seen. I shot plenty of loads, spent plenty of time and money trying to make it do so. Didn't materialize. I'm a good shooter, not the best shooter. You may have better luck. If you want a sub MOA shooter, then spend some time taking that journey or just get one of their 10 series, maybe one 10 series. By the way, I forgot to show you this. See those lugs? They ride in channels built into the receiver. It's pretty cool. Yeah, when you bring it all the way back, you'll still have a little bit of movement. Just throw that in. Yeah, take the journey or get a gun that's going to be more expensive. Maybe a better stock system, like the Savage Accu stock that really locks that action down. Maybe a heavier weight barrel. But then you're kind of getting into a different philosophy of use, aren't you? Heavier gun. You know, harder to carry in the mountains. This is a mountain rifle. It shoots more than adequately for the hunting role, maybe even the survival role. I like it. Smooth, trigger can be improved upon. That's an unfancy review.